A river is the source of every civilization that has existed on earth. The oldest civilizations in the world had their settlements on the banks of the major rivers. Mesopotamian civilization was based between the rivers Tigris and Euphrates. The word Mesopotamia means between two rivers. Egyptian civilization was established on the banks of the river Nile. The Indus Valley civilization was established on the banks of the river Indus. As per Vedic literature, India was once called Sapta Sindhu, which meant the land of seven rivers. It is believed that the first settlement of Vedic civilization was established on the banks of the river Sindhu and then some of the groups of the Sindhu civilization migrated to the banks of the other six rivers. Shatadru is today identified as Satlaj, Parushni as Ravi, Asikni as Chenab, Vitashta as Jhelam and Vipasha as Bias, while Sindhu being the Indus. However, one of the rivers mentioned in the Vedic text is now lost. The name of the river is Saraswati. The Sapta Sindhava region was bounded by Saraswati in the east, by the Sindhu in the west, and the five in between were Shatudru, Vipasha, Asikni, Parushni, and Vitasta. The seven rivers are located in Punjab or northwestern India. Saraswati means the flowing one, the one that flows like a river as well as the one through whom flows knowledge. Saraswati is the most sung about river in the Vedas and is called the Ambitame, Naditame, Devitame. That is the best of mothers, best of rivers and best of goddesses in the Rigveda. According to the seventh mandala of the Rigveda, Saraswati was a mighty river that flowed from the mountain to the sea, sustaining the lives of the Vedic people. This very reference gives a valuable pointer to Saraswati's geography and the search for the river invariably begins from the Himalayas. The Shalya Parva of Mahabharat states that Saraswati rose from the lake of Brahma in days of yore. This lake of Brahma is the Manasarovar lake in Tibet at the base of Mount Kailash, which is indeed linked to many Indian rivers such as the Brahmaputra and the Indus. So it would not be surprising that Saraswati was originated somewhere in that region. Michael Danino has researched extensively about Indian history and is the author of numerous works of great scholarship. Based on recent research in a wide range of scientific disciplines, Mr. Danino puts two and two together remarkably well and brings to life the vital role this river played in sowing the seeds of Indian civilization. The result of his stupendous efforts is the usually popular and widely acclaimed book, The Lost River. Michael Danino has painstakingly gathered data from a wide variety of sources, study of ancient literature, recorded historical accounts, official reports from archives of the British Raj, data from the Archaeological Survey of India records, pollen analysis from the lakes of Rajasthan, studies of oxygen isotope ratios, remote sensing satellite, etc. According to Danino's research, about 5,000 years ago, the flow of Saraswati was supplemented by the waters of Yamuna and Satlaj, both of which are perennial rivers from the Himalayan glaciers. When we envision the combined volume of these three, we can visualize the magnificence of Saraswati as extolled in the Vedas. It appears that the river originated from the Hariki Dun glacier in West Garhwal along with the river Yamuna. The two rivers flowed parallel for some distance and later joined proceeding south as the Vedic Saraswati. The seasonal rivers and rivulets including Ghaggar joined Saraswati as it followed the course of the present river through Punjab and Haryana. River Satlaj, Shatadru in Sanskrit, joined Saraswati as a tributary at Shatran, approximately 25 kilometers south of the modern city of Patiala. Saraswati then followed the course of Ghaggar through Rajasthan and Hakra in Bhawalpur before emptying into the run of Kutch via Nara in Sindh province, running parallel to the Indus River. Isro scientist A.K. Gupta found fresh water in the Thar Desert at places where no source of water exists. So what went wrong? It seems the tectonic shifts pushed Saraswati underground, which by the way tallies quite well with the popular belief about the flow of the river. Satellite images have confirmed the existence of a large number of ground faults in the Saraswati Sindhu and have caused the seepage of Saraswati water to underground channels, contributing to the legend of the Vedic Saraswati disappearing underground. So the next question arises, which is, 
can the archaeological evidence of Saraswati be somehow found in the artifacts from Harappan culture? Interestingly, archaeological sites discovered on the banks of Saraswati mirror the descriptions from ancient Vedic texts as well. According to the Mahabharat, many great kings used to perform yagya on the Saraswati's banks, which correlates well with the abundance of fire altars discovered at places like Kalibangan, a major Harappan town located on the southern banks of the Ghaggar. Traditional historians had refused to put faith in the abundant descriptions of Saraswati and had declared the date of arrival of the Aryans in India around 1500 BCE, that is before the Common Era. Also, they envisioned the Aryans as marauding forces who wiped out the resident Harappans and branded them as Dasyus. However, the findings mentioned above threw up some very important questions, namely, Saraswati is related to the Rig Veda and is worshipped by the Aryans. So how is it that more than 400 Harappan sites correlate so perfectly with its course? If the river had dwindled to a stream around 3000 BCE, how does it fit in with the traditional dating of Aryans entering India around 1500 BCE? The artificial dating of Aryans in India is questioned in what is known as the Frawley's Paradox, given by Professor David Frawley, who is the founder director of the American Institute of Vedic Studies in Santa Fe, New Mexico. The paradox brings to fore an extremely pertinent point that says, on one hand, we have the vast Vedic literature without any archaeological evidence to support it, while on the other hand, we have almost 2,500 archaeological sites associated with the Indus Saraswati civilization without any literature associated with it. For any sane person, the logical conclusion would be pretty obvious. The Rig Veda was composed while the Saraswati was in full flow much before 3000 BCE and the Vedic and Harappan cultures belonged to the same civilization. There is no need to assume that Indus Saraswati people were different from the Vedic Aryans. This assumption was created out of thin air by early British historians who found it difficult to believe the existence of an Asian civilization predating the Hellenistic civilizations of Europe. The discovery of a vast number of sites on the banks of Saraswati, the correlation with excerpts from Vedic scriptures, the revision of dates of these scriptures based on the latest findings of the rivers, all of these are tied to each other and lead to a common conclusion. The till now considered mythical Saraswati was historically present in the Indian subcontinent, sowing the seeds of Hindu religion and giving birth to the oldest civilization in the world, that of Indus Saraswati. If you found this video informative, then share it with your followers and help us to spread the greatness of ancient India with as many people as we can. Stay tuned, stay educated, and last but not the least, know your culture by self-investigating the truth. Shubhaste Panthana Santu, Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.